Now here's the kittens from that cat that's on the, that I showed on the other video eating uh, chicken and noodles. These are the kittens. She's filling up so she can feed them. Ain't they cute? Look at them. Just born yesterday. Yeah. Supposed to wait two weeks to pick them up, but uh, when the mother is real close and you're always always around them, uh, you know, it doesn't doesn't hurt to do a little bit of picking them up. But if the mother is wild or you don't see them very often, never pick up the kittens until they're two weeks old or until they, you know, get their eyes open and start walking. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. It's nice kittens. Nice little kittens. Well, I can't get Tanya in there in the kit. Okay, where's my... either one of the fields. So one of the things as a healer that I'm conscious of is that when I'm connecting, I am tuning in, I'm letting the energy touch me to bring me understanding and awareness, but I'm not letting it stay here to where it's it's like about healthy boundaries. So it can connect with me, it can touch me, but I'm not letting it change me in a negative way. And I say that because so many healers, whether it's massage therapists or you see nurses that really start to have issues with their health, and it's because they're in that nurturing mode and they're making connections with all these people with different issues going on, and they're not having those clear boundaries energetically. So they're taking on their pain, they're taking on their stuff. This is not empowering and this is not a healthy path for the human doing that or for the one that they're trying to take it off of. So when we're tuning in, we want to make sure that that healthy boundary is there and we're tuning in and letting it touch us with awareness and then it's released. So every time I do a healing session, I make sure I surround that being in love and light. It's all energetic. And then I release them back to their source, thank source for its assistance, and then I let go of the connection. But here's the entanglement part. Every single client that I have connected with and even people I have never met, I will have dreams about them sometimes randomly. It seems random. And I will just go, huh, that's interesting. What's that dream coming through for? And then I'll send a text to the person. Hey, I had this interesting dream. It made me think of you. And here's what happened. Every single time I do this, that person will then get back to me later in the day or maybe right away. And they're just like, holy crap, Tanya, how do you know that? Like, this is what's going on in my life situation. And they'll start explaining things and how synchronistic or what they call how random that is or how much of a coincidence that is that I understand is a synchronistic connection and that is spirit showing we've made a connection and now spirit and in, in a sense I see that as their soul is calling back in that help and that support without them talking to me they may need not even be logically realizing they need the help and support so they don't even know to reach out or pick up the phone but soul to soul, we're having a conversation. So I feel like in dream state, a lot of us are having soul conversations. Even when we're not talking, we're talking. So there's a lot of communication going on, even when no one's speaking. Yes, and the entanglement part, right. one of the things I read that I disagree with, and I think it's because this is part of where we're evolving to. 
So I'm just going to continue to read what she says in here. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. So back to like, we believe that we can only affect, uh, alter things that we can touch, which is not true, but that is an old belief system. So this is not the case. We've now got demonstrably more accurate model that proves that one. It'll be really cute here in a couple of weeks and they get their eyes open. Absolutely. 10 days. Unfortunately, most of us still persist in hanging on to the old chain of events worldview, even though physics has demonstrated time and time again that once an atom has been in a proximity of another atom, it will be influenced or entangled by that atom no matter how far away it travels. So this is kind of like, you know, when we think of people who we've loved and they've left us or a, a pet, a beloved pet passes on and no matter how distant it seems they are we feel them with us at times this is because they are that that there. Now we got them all. at an atomic level at an energetic level and so in consciousness the oneness is in the consciousness like in the movie avatar where it's talking about awa like all energy is borrowed and must be returned back to awa in a sense think of that as the big collective soup and in the end of our carnation we let our body fall and our consciousness will go back into that ocean. But we are forever connected and entangled with the souls we've connected with. So I feel like the more we come around, the more we're making more connections, it creates more expansion in the evolution of our soul, who we connect with, how we affect each other. So this is pretty big stuff, something to just kind of process. But it's pretty amazing to me, and it shows how even what's so this is kind of the tricky part. So in here, it's saying that once it connects. So um, I'm trying to see whose theory. One of the guys said it, if somebody <laughs> touches, like they literally shake hands. Um, do, 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 where did I read that? So anyway, somewhere in okay, okay, okay the butterfly effect. Um, all they need now is to put some ribbons around their neck. Yeah, I'm and jumping around so I've, I've read a bunch of this this afternoon. So anyhow, <laughs> one of these scientists in here has a, a belief that they said that once you shake the hand, a little with coat someone, or something on them, then you are forever. Actually, I know why. I just got it hit. It's the holographic universe is the book that that's in, and that's my other book. So in that book, it talks about that once you shake a hand with someone, you are forever entangled. Like you have made a connection. And now your connection with that soul is perpetually happening. I feel like it doesn't even need to have a handshake. So, like, I had a yeah, all three the same color. Her grandmother the mother. was really ill. There and might be an orange one there somewhere. I didn't lot. see. And she's, you know, had a lot of healing interaction with me. And we've done a lot of mentorship. But I've never met her grandma. I don't know anything about her grandma. I, you know, I just know she's sick because she mentioned her and said that to please send love and prayers. So I said, you know, I would love to tune in if you'd like, and I will tune in and see what's going on with her. And I offer that for my heart if you'd like the help. And she's like, sure, I'd love that. So I tune in. I start reading all this information going on in her body. There's all She has, like, ulcer. She's really not doing well. Her body is incredibly weak. And I start kind of typing all these messages back to my client. Oh. So just back to my client. And she's just like, oh my gosh, yes, this is all happening. And this is exactly what's going down. So she starts checking in to get confirmation of everything. So when that's happening, I've never even met that soul. I've never, in fact, I've never even met in person my client. And so... This is something that I'm trying to show you that it's beyond a handshake. This is about a connection through our soul. It's about a connection through our energy and our intention to just tune in now. And we, we can do this beyond time and space because this is part of what we're evolving to understand that time and space are actually an illusion. So the illusion of time and space is what gets us in trouble. We get in this 3D reality and we think, Everything moves in a certain way, and there's these rules and regulations of how it works. But when we get beyond the rule system, we get into more of a, a galactic perspective, the universal mind, we see that mm. everything's happening simultaneously now, and that there is no time and space. There is no separation. So what will really blow your mind 
is in the holographic universe. If you remember me mentioning this book, which is an amazing book. In this one, they talk about not only, you know, with, with what I was just sharing with you of how we can affect people in the now. This talks about how <laughs> we can go in and affect the past. <laughs> you can so take it back, take it back. I'm gonna <laughs> read really quickly is there's a, a, a kind of like a test that they do with a group of people um, that they're basically doing kind of like past life regression, but they're tuning in and doing she more. She didn't of like me having them up here, no. which is a completely different. You want them back in their nest. So this woman's doing this test with these clients, and she tested over 2,500 people participated in this project. And basically, in the end of it, there were different. Well, you gonna come back and get the it. other there two? Was three, or let's see, four different groups that had four different futures. So some of the futures were like after some kind of apocalyptic event, and like what they were living like. Some of the groups were not even in body; they had left their body, and something had happened to where they weren't even here in physical. Um, some of them were actually surviving post you know, some kind of disaster and they had actually learned to live off the land and kind of come back into their balance. And another group were living in this very beautiful high vibrational reality <coughs> where it was blissful. It was like utopia. So this is people that are all being tested through this kind of like a hypnotic um, experience, but all different future outcomes. Now, when I talk about holographic leaping, the reason that's important to any of us, even if we're not science, you grab one of them and let the other two. We're focusing on ourselves. She'll be after we them in a little bit, but it probably won't get on the video. Future reality. So, if too many of us are caught up in that old paradigm of you got to touch it to affect it, then we're she'll go down there and nurse that like one, dinosaurs. and then. In when it gets through the nursing, universe, then she'll just, come back and come back up and get another one. Kind of so if we can move forward and we can shake off the old limitation, we can start to see that our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions are in essence creating our future. So why is that important to any of us? Well, it's important because each of us are participating in a collective shift. Each one of us are participating in either, you know, group one, two, three, or four. Where are we going? Where is it that we feel the world is going? If we keep preaching about the world's going to hell in a handbasket and it's, you know, everything's terrible and it's doom and gloom and apocalypse, the end of times are coming, I can tell you where those people are headed because they're consciously putting out energy into the field of that kind of an outcome. Now, does that mean that's where we're all going? No. So what we want to be conscious of is each of us being very aware of what we're thinking about, what we're feeling about, and what we're calling for. Here's the kitty book. In the future. Because if we're not being conscious of that, then we're unconsciously participating anyway. So if some of us, like right now, there's the whole political thing going on. And there's all this, you know, stuff in the media. And a lot of it, I feel, is very strategically being done to get everyone hooked, to get them fearful, to get them distracted from the true issues that are going on politically. And if we don't take our awareness back and we don't really be become conscious of our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions Meow. about our future, then we start to unconsciously enable <laughs> a future system to be birthed through our unconscious thinking. So it's really important stuff. And it's not just about casting a vote when it comes time to vote for a president. This is about what am I thinking about and what am I feeling about and what am I dreaming and bringing about? Not very loud. As you need to come and ask me a little louder than that. About, we collectively <laughs> are really fast quantum shifts. Some of them can be really loud. That makes sense. I'm going to pause for a second. Oh, that one's a lot louder. Rattling on for 22 minutes. Anything? No, there are no, no, no questions. No. Okay, so if you guys want to write a question, you know, go let, chat, uh, type into the live chat, type your name. If anyone wants to call in, 919-518-9773. If you want to be brave and courageous and call in, I encourage that. Um, okay, so the, I was just telling you how 
basically our thoughts, feelings, emotions can create a future. So that's kind of 